I almost tear my quad. Mm-hmm. So from what I hear from the, some of the guys on the sideline, he asks, who is that out there on the ground? He's like, oh, they like his winner, coach. He's like, well, well, let, let's get him up so we can get this game over with. <laughs> Don't you ever. No, 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 really. That shows that you have no respect for your players. You know, guys is out there putting their bodies and, right. you know, you know, well-being on the line for you and for you to make that comment, and I know that you made it, it's the reason that you're fired. It's the reason that your players quit on you because you don't know how to be a people's person and how to coach and lead men. There's guys that know how to lead men, and there's guys that don't know how to lead men, and he should just be a coordinator. He's not a leader of men. All right, let me say this. I think Jay's a player's coach. I think most players will say that. I think he's known for that. I agree he might not be an overall leader of men, and he, probably his skill set is better suited as a coordinator. Um, I don't doubt that he said that about Dante. Who's that on the ground? Let's get him up and get over. You know, that's some frustration there. Uh, maybe he hadn't built a, you know, a, a, a real relationship with Dante in the one year that he was here. But I'd say, by and large, if you ask most guys, they'd say that Jay is a player's coach and mm-hmm. that they respect him. And I never really got the feeling that they were just quitting on him. Maybe a couple times here and there. But by and large, I thought they played pretty hard for him. They're just but, not that talented. But here's a little more follow-up on Dante Whitner and Jay Gruden and his coaching. Did a lot of your teammates in that locker room that you do, obviously, about Jay Gruden, that he wasn't a great leader, you know, him always is player-friendly. You know, players like to play for him, but obviously you did not. Yeah, but he was one of those guys that, you know, smile on your face and talk behind your back, and you can feel it. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take, you know, a spirit animal to understand that, right? And these guys have been playing for him for years. I was only there for a few months, but I was a lot older than these guys, so I can pick up on those things. Hmm. So he just opened Also, and he didn't leave. It wasn't just Jay. But he, I think I think what he reinforces to me my general impression of Jay Gruden is kind of, like you said, nice guy, mm-hmm. can draw up some nice plays. I think he puts, you know, the offensive players in positions where they can be successful. Mm-hmm. He hasn't had the greatest talent. He's had to overcome a lot of things during his time with the Redskins, but I think he can scheme up plays. But I don't think anybody would say he seems like he runs a t- tight ship. No. And so well, he, delegates, the first thing Callahan did. he delegates to the defense. And one thing that Dante Whitner also said, I don't remember in which part, is that a lot of coaches just hire their buddies and hire friends. A lot of Maybe cronyism. Not, right. And I don't know if Joe Barry was his buddy, but uh, he didn't necessarily hire the best guy. You know, he had Joe Barry. Now he's got Greg Minuski, who was the outside linebackers coach and was elevated to the defensive coordinator. It's funny. He also commented about Greg Minuski. Here are a couple cuts when he comments on... Minuski, who he didn't even seem to be aware of what he was coaching. Right. You have the coaches in the Redskins facility, like Perry Fuel and a lot of those guys. They don't know how to teach football. I know more about football than Perry Fuel and a lot of those defensive coordinators than Greg Minuski, right? I know more about the game of football and the secondary and these different things. Like, these guys are just friends of the coaches. You know, a lot of these coaches are just hiring their friends. They're not hiring the best teachers and giving people an opportunity to come in teach the guys, teach them why you're teaching them what they're teaching them, and then let them go on and have success on the football field. If everybody just continue to hire their friends, the NFL is going to continue to suffer like this. It's going to continue to be a disparity between the great teams and the bad teams in the NFL. Now, to, to defend Perry Fuel, and I've never been in that business ever before, <laughs> I mean, he's still employed. I mean, he's the Carolina Panthers DB's coach now. So. Right. You know, he, he may not respect yeah, but it him, but somehow a, he's still, like, finding jobs and finding gigs. Yeah, but that's kind of the nature I mean, of this. Once you get into the club, yeah, you yeah, kind I mean, of – you can last for right, 25 right. years. How many teams right. has Norv Turner been the coordinator for? Well, yeah. well, <laughs> I mean, he doesn't. Once you're in the, I mean, Minuski's been around forever. Yeah. Right. Forever. Here's yeah. what I thought was most interesting is when he talked about clip four, we talked about Minuski uh, not being able to disguise a defense uh, against the quarterback, how he could just watch film and immediately know what they're running. If you put Greg Minuski in a room and said, teach me how to disguise a cover three and make it look like a cover four and make Tom Brady believe it or show or that looks like a a single high coverage and manipulate um, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, he would not be able to do that. He would not be able to do it. So how can you be a defensive coordinator if you 
isolate the best minds in the NFL. You can't be. How do you You're know get he doesn't know how to do that? I, I'm not questioning you. I because just like, they haven't been detail. doing it. Say when again? I watch the film, when I watch the film, yeah. when I watch their film, I watch all these games this year, Yeah. They, they're not doing it. The safeties aren't showing certain coverages. I can look at the film and tell exactly what coverage they're playing every time. Why is that? And I'm an outsider. Hmm. The thing which speaks to me is what we were talking about earlier. You just look at the defensive rankings. So Greg Minuski is the coordinator. They have boosted the personnel the last couple of seasons with drafts, with free agent acquisitions like Landon Collins. And yet the defensive rankings, they're at the bottom. Right. It, it's they're fine. at the bottom. You know what? You have a limited shelf life for Minuski. Because he's going to get blown out of season's I mean, we've been end. For he's not going to be when, here next when year. When did we come up with the Minovsky playbook? Can you uh, grab that behind you? Last it's year. a good visual aid. I don't know. <laughs> Do you even remember what's actually on the playbook? Oh, I know. The base it's Swiss 11, cheese defense. defense. It's 11 pieces of Swiss yeah. cheese. It's a good law. It's a nice dumb bit. Yeah. But it's just 11 pieces of Swiss cheese. It's a solid bit. That is the it's defense. A, it's a good visual aid. There's no doubt about All right, it. Let's it's kind of frustrating, calls. by the way, the Alabama players who, like, they lost four or five games in their career. Right. right? If that, that might even be high for, yeah. for Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, uh, Sean Deion Hamilton. Right. And now they're squeaking. Landon Collins. Now they're squeaking games <laughs> right. over the worst team in the league that's trying to lose games on purpose. And their defense <laughs> is ranked 28th in the league. Right.